This time on The Gadget Show. Jason and I attempted television first. I am a human. We tried to present all our studio links without going anywhere near the studio. Piece of cake. We're talking artificial intelligence. Hello, good friends of The Gadget Show. State-of-the-art motion capture. Uh, and a rather uncomfortable face mask. Wow. All to find out if we are totally replaceable. Behave yourself. What are you doing? This could be my P45. Also in the show, John's joined by racing legend Johnny Herbert for some extreme testing of surround sound systems. That sounded good to me. Otis goes to the 2011 Toy Fair oh, oh, and shows why we don't usually let him play with guns. <laughs> and Pollyanna slips into her swimsuit and finds a very cool way of exploring under the waves. <laughs> Welcome to The Gadget Show. Yeah, we've got possibly the most weird and exciting and unusual show ever for you this week. Yes, that's right, Jason. By now you will have realised that Jason and I aren't quite our normal selves. And that's all down to the challenge, isn't it, Jace? It most certainly is, Susie. And I, for one, am loving this challenge. Because right now I'm actually at home, having a day off, lying in a deep hot bath, happy, naked and totally chillaxed. Thanks very much. Not exactly the image I wanted to think about right now, but let's talk about the challenge. So a few weeks ago, Jason and I were challenged with something that was so difficult and so complicated. So downright crazy. So downright crazy indeed, that it was going to take something as ambitious as this to try and make it work. I've got to say that this is one of the oddest presenting experiences I've, I've ever had. And now you're touching me. No, please, <laughs> Susie. <laughs> Nice, but, nice. But, <laughs> yeah, nice <laughs> for you, maybe. Not for me, please. Oh, all right then. Yeah. Now, we're used to receiving challenges in some pretty random places, but to get one whilst trying to get into the gadget studio was a first. Why can't we get Hello? In? Hello? And they're not normally delivered by an eight foot robot called Titan. <laughs> oh, hello. You're a bit of a cracker, aren't you? <laughs> What's going on? Jason and Susie, your challenge is to use technology to present the gadget show in the studio without actually being in the studio. Oh! Get thinking. Good luck, and may the best virtual presenter win. Thanks, Titan. Thanks, Titan. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be so difficult. We can't be in the studio, but we've got to present the show. What, what does that mean? What does that even mean? Actually, I was playing dumb. I knew exactly what this challenge was about and exactly how to win it. Titan had given me an idea. Over the years, I've seen hundreds, if not thousands, of robots. All I had to do was put that vast experience to work and build a robot to take my place. And they're getting more sophisticated all the time. The kind of robots you can now buy on your average high street far exceed what I used to watch in the movies when I was a kid. And none are more sophisticated than this little chap. His name's Neo, and I should be able to just bring him to life by touching him. He's developed in France, and he's currently available to buy for developers. Hello, Neo. Hi, Jason, and hello to fans of The Gadget Show. My name is Neo. And I am designed to be a robot friend. <laughs> Neo is the most graceful robot we've ever seen. He's been designed as a teaching aid for engineering students and as such, he's constantly evolving. But straight out of the box, he comes with touch sensors, cameras, infrared, sonar, mics, speakers, and a very visual interface system that makes programming him a doddle. There's just one problem. This little chap took five years to develop and cost $20 million. Hmm, this was going to be tougher than I thought. It took me longer than Jay's to come up with a plan, but after a bit of web work, I had the answer. I would take my inspiration from the biggest movie of all time. Avatar! No, I'm not going to paint myself blue, but that film was all about creating a clone, an avatar, so someone can be in two places at once. Now, if I can do that, if I can create a digital puppet, an avatar, then I can be in the studio without actually having to be in the studio. And for that, to make it as real as possible and as true to me, I need motion capture. 
Motion capture, the recording of actors to create realistic virtual characters, has been around for more than a decade. But now it's not just high-end movies that are using it, but also TV and video games too. So to capture body movement, typical technology would be cameras like these, a studio rather like this one, and a bobble suit, which is rather unflattering, like this. The cameras pick up the reflective bobbles and specialist software on high-powered computers instantly turn my movements into a three-dimensional stick Susie. All I needed now was a way of putting some meat on that wire frame. This was looking promising. So how long would it take you to, to make a Susie complete, looking like me? It could take a few months. Well, a few weeks to a few months, yeah. It, it, it totally depends. You know I want to do this real time though, don't you? Uh, not without the avatar budget you're not going to. You're going to struggle. Creating a realistic looking avatar that could react to my every move was proving tough. But it can't be impossible because there's at least one piece of consumer tech that does it straight out of the box. <laughs> the Kinect for the Xbox 360. So, if I could find some way of combining the real time rendering of the Kinect with the more detailed avatars of the movies, I'd be well on my way to creating a virtual Susie good enough to present the show. Piece of cake. I too was having a mare. Finding or even building a robot good enough to present the show within the time we had and our budget was looking impossible. And there was another problem. I'm going to need something extra. What I need is a robot that can take on my personality and be a real physical presence in the studio. And you know what? I think I might just have found a contender. Check it out. It's called the giraffe. Isn't it absolutely amazing? Look, I can move around with my strange face on it. Isn't that fantastic? The giraffe has been designed for video conferencing. It's got a built-in camera, a screen, speakers and a microphone. In fact, everything you need to have a two-way conversation over the net. But the best bit is you can drive it around. Oh, look at that Series 5000 shredder. Look at the lines on that handsome little brute. Hi, guys. How's it going? Hi, Jason. <laughs> It's not easy being a robot. I've got to say, I think the giraffe is an incredible piece of technology, but as I stand next to it and as I bang into doors and glass windows, I do realise its limitations. And in terms of the physical presence required to replace me as host of the Gadget Show, I think there's something better out there. Sorry, old chap. Well, obviously, uh, because I am sat between Jason's robot and Susie's avatar, they have had some level of success in their challenge. But, of course, I've got to put that to the test, haven't I? So, uh, are you OK with that, Susie? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Jason, <gasps> are you ready? Ready for what? <laughs> Guys, I would like you, in your own presenter style, to link into the ad break. All right? So, Susie, you first. So, time for a break now, but after that, Jason and I continue our quest to reproduce ourselves. Is this really the gadget show of the future, or is it the world gone mad? Just two of the questions that we probably won't answer in the next half an hour, so <laughs> stick around. OK, not bad. That was good. That was, that was actually quite good. Jason, take it away, sir. Ask me a question from your homework, and I will answer. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, what is the square root of nine, Jason? Three. Good stuff. It's good enough for me. We'll, we'll see you after the break. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Now I want to talk to you about surround sound. For many of us, the home entertainment experience wouldn't be complete without the sound of aeroplanes whizzing overhead, cars screeching across the living room, and monsters creeping up on us from behind the sofa. There's no doubt surround sound really does bring movies and video games to life. But for non-audiophiles, the marketplace can be rather daunting. Full of amplifiers, speaker stands, speakers, cables and all sorts of stuff at prices that would make even a movie star blush. So, how much do you really need to spend to get a good surround sound setup? Well, to find out, I enlisted the help of a racing driver and devised a devilishly cunning test. 
I'd got three systems, a top-of-the-range one from Bose, a mid-priced Teufel Impact system, and a budget-priced one from Sony, and I was going to have a little fun with them. I'm not going to test these three systems by just watching a movie. Oh no, I'm going to record my own soundtrack. Off you go, Sam. Here at the famous Rockingham Motor Racing Circuit, our sound man Neil used a surround sound microphone to record stunt driver Sam's signature moves. The drifts, the donuts, and everything in between. Good. It's a pretty satisfying sound. We then went to a professional sound studio to produce a full cinematic 5.1 surround sound version, which we could play on each of our three home cinema systems. The one that sounded the most realistic would be our winner. And for the sound test, I'd invited Le Mans 24-hour champion and Formula One racing legend Johnny Herbert to choose his favourite. Now, you must be pretty used to the sound of a racing V8 like that. Yeah. But are you also a home cinema enthusiast? I have got one at home. I do get moaned about when I'm fiddling around with it. So you're quite particular about your sound and yes. settings and all that sort of thing. Very Excellent. much so. Makes a big difference. Good, good, good. To avoid Johnny getting clues about the different systems, I made him wear a blindfold and noise-cancelling headphones between tests. But once I pressed play, I removed the headphones. First up, he listened to the mid-range Teufel Impact 3000, which has a claimed 600 watts of output and an integrated Blu-ray player. It had a detailed sound, but it didn't seem to be impressing Johnny. So, Johnny, what do you think of that? Um, that was very echoey, that one. It all seemed very sort of distant and not close to me. There wasn't that sort of deep surround sound to it. Next, I set up the top-end Bose V35 system, which has inputs for six HD video and audio sources, including an iPod dock. The Bose delivered a rich, beautifully cinematic sound. But was it as good as the real thing? Verdict on number two? Um, that was a much deeper sound, a little bit more bass to it. I sort of felt still it was a little bit more behind me. The only time I really noticed it was properly in front of me was actually when it stopped and I heard the door slam. Oh dear. So, would the budget Sony BDV E370 system with its claimed 850 watts of output be realistic enough for Johnny? <laughs> Although the Sony's bass was somewhat forced, it was very easy to place the sounds of the car. No, that was good. I could actually follow it all the way around 360. In the first two, I struggled. I lost it from my left to the right. So that was very clear. Well, I think now it's time for uh, headphones off and blindfold off. Uh -huh. And uh, we can reveal the one you like best was the cheapest this of one? our three wow. systems, this Sony. What? Well, that shocks me. That I thought that was the most expensive. So it was an astonishing victory for the budget-priced Sony. But what about the G ratings? Well, the mid-range Teufel gets two Gs, what Johnny felt was a rather disjointed sound. The high-end Bose gets three Gs for an agreeably cinematic performance that nevertheless falls slightly short of the hefty price tag. And the winner with four Gs is the Sony. Johnny's favourite sound by far, and even better, it's the cheapest system of the three. Now, if you want to find out more about last week's big news, the unveiling of Apple's successor to the iPad, the iPad 2, then log on to channel5.com slash gadget show for our web-exclusive video from the launch and my first hands-on with the new tablet. Can mm. I take that off you? Mm. Thanks very much. I always end up losing things. Log on and check it out. Now, if you fancy going diving these days, but you're not a qualified frogman, then the both. best way yes. of getting down with the fishers is, of course, the good old traditional snorkel mask and flippers, just like what our Jace is wearing here. But, as I recently discovered on a trip to the States, there's a sexy new bit of tech that is aiming to change all of that and make mixing with the marlin, well, as easy as riding a bike. Fancy it, Jace? Justin Bieber lives in a green submarine. Maybe not. The Hydro Breathing Observational Bubble, or Hydro Bob for short, is a cross between a scooter and a diving bell. It's a sort of 21st century segue for the sea. It's the brainchild of Andrew Sneath, 
who despite being based in Florida, isn't American. He's actually a Brit from the West Midlands. So Andrew, a guy from Bromsgrove, how did you come up with this idea? Well, it was really a way of escaping and traveling the world and coming up with a really cool, exciting product to do that with. Um, as a keen swimmer and windsurfer and snorkeler, I thought, well, if you could build a little submarine, then I could go around the world setting them up. Andrew has designed the Hydrobob to be as user-friendly as possible, allowing virtually anyone, after a few minutes training, to get in and have a go. So this is your steering left and right, and this is your go trigger, so you squeeze it to drive. If you let go, it stops. Okay. And then we have a buoyancy bag inside that we inflate and deflate for up and down. And when you turn the air on, you'll hear the noise. When it gets down into the red, then it's, I'm out of air. With my training complete, it was time to take this yellow submarine for a spin. Oh, oh, it's so cold. Cold. The Bob has a small electric motor under the seat that receives its power from a hefty battery in the base. It's got a top speed of around five knots, which is more than enough for bobbing around. Now, one thing that stands out like a sore thumb is the buoy that's attached by a line to the Bob's dome. It's not needed to keep the thing upright. It's there to stop beginners from going too deep, and it also lets people on the surface know where you are, which, if you're in the sea, would be a real safety aid. It's really so and it's definitely a case of the more the merrier. With other people in the water, it's even more fun. The Hydrobob costs nine grand, and they're already proving hugely popular at holiday resorts all around the world. This could just be how we'll all get to swim with the fishers in the future. Welcome back. Now it's time for this week's top five, and we're going high tech with the latest toys. Yes, gone are the days where you had to use your imagination to bring your toys to life. These days, they come packed with so much intelligence, they're smarter than the kids they're actually aimed at. But which toys are going to set the world alight in 2011? Well, I headed down to the London Toy Fair to find out. And believe me when I say it was really, really hard work. The Toy Fair at London's Olympia is Britain's biggest exhibition dedicated to all things toy related. How you doing? With over 200 stands, it's bristling with all the latest and greatest new toy tech for 2011. And I was in my element. It's everything here from cool RC cars, giant miniature toy Ferris wheels, cute cuddly toys that repeat what you say, <laughs> life-size Lego ninjas, and of course, a whole host of your favorite characters. After a fun-filled few hours of intense toy flying, <laughs> driving, sorry, sorry, and uh, braking, oh, oh, I'd come to a decision on my top five toys for 2011. I didn't know, I didn't know it would be that loud, sorry, sorry. At five, it's the Whiplash Scooter, a unique creation combining a twisting waveboard with a set of scooter handlebars that can be ridden in two completely different ways. You can either ride it like a traditional scooter, one foot on, one foot for propulsion, or you can use both feet to twist and flex the board as you carve and weave yourself along. Check me out. Four, it's Air Picks, an ingenious electronic plectrum that brings air guitaring to life. Each one comes pre-programmed with three rock classics. In order to play the songs, all you've got to do 
is play your air guitar. An accelerometer senses your strumming movements, which in turn triggers the inbuilt speaker to play the notes. It's the simple things, you know what I mean? At three, it's the Pop Shots Bender Blaster, a brand new air powered dart shooter with a clever feature for super sneaky covert combat. The foam barrel can be bent any direction you like so that this suction tip dart can be shot even round corners. You can even shoot over walls. The best part is, no one knows it was you. Only problem is, when you run out of ammo, sorry, you may have to offer up a groveling apology to your unsuspecting victims. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> At two, it's the App Toys App Gun, a revolutionary gaming peripheral built to enhance your iPhone and iPod gameplay experience. Look at it. It's an iPod in a toy gun. Forget tapping about on the screen with your fingertips. With this, you can lock, load, swing about a bit, and pull a real trigger. It's been launched with a compatible game available through the app store called Alien Invasion. Oh, who got me? Where are they? Ah! It uses the iPhone's camera to create an augmented reality alien shoot 'em up Big kids will be satisfied with this, yeah? Oh, this is great. And at number one, it's the Eyeball, a brand new interactive puzzle which will have you hooked in an instant. The Eyeball has six different buttons, which when pressed will light up in one of three different colors, red, green, or blue. The challenge is to hit the buttons in the correct sequence so that all six light up with an identical color. That sounds really hard. However, if you're clever, two reds, or persistent enough to complete it, four reds! You can post your time on a global leaderboard on the company's website, eyeball3.com. Did he, did he stay intact if you throw him against the wall in frustration? Okay, no, okay. This one here is the kind of toy I know Susie likes, so yeah. Susie, why don't you have a oh. go on that? Yes, please. <laughs> oh! See, so just a little avatar-based humor Meanie. there. Oh, I'm sorry. If you've just joined us, you're probably wondering why I look, well, a little bit strange. And Jason here looks like a baddie from a very old episode of Doctor Who. Explain, Jace. What do you think of Star Wars? Yeah, you know I like Star Wars. Anyway, the thing is, with the challenge, we were asked to create gadget versions of ourselves to present the show from the studio without us actually having to be there. So, obviously, I went down the Avatar route and Jason here went down the robotic route. Did you, Jace? I am robotic. Yes, you are robotic. And indeed, for Jace to be robotic and for me to be an avatar, to get to this stage, we had to get our hands on some incredible tech that we've never seen before on The Gadget Show. I was convinced that a remote control avatar was still the best way to win this presenter challenge. But I'd struggled to find a way to control the avatar in real time, which is why I enlisted the help of Inition, one of Europe's leading virtual reality specialists. And boy, did they have the kit. We have got our hands on this, the latest technology, and we are the first people to be able to use it. It's a huge light box with 14 cameras all the way around, each camera capturing a different angle of my body. As I move around, you'll see it capturing exactly what I'm doing. And it works on silhouettes, so no need for a bubble suit to create their stick man. Plus, and this is the big one, with this system, they can build me an avatar that I can control in real time. So, I had some photographs taken back at the Gadget Show studio and sent them down to Jeff, and he's been working with those photographs and an avatar of a, a gaming girl, really, to merge and, and, and create. That's right. Yeah. Susie. Yep, um, uh, so here, here's what I start out with, and uh, you can see I've got views of you from the front and, and also from the side and from the rear. It's getting to look a bit more like you as far as the proportions go. Okay, uh, so how easy is that to change now? You Could like? you just marry the waist and make the legs longer? <laughs> longer legs, yeah. yeah. The digital diet <laughs> works wonders. With my avatar's body taking shape, I moved on to its head and teaching it to talk. Hello and welcome to The Gadget Show. A, E, I, O, U. It seems like the mouth at the moment is just 
opening and closing like a puppet. Can we make it any more sophisticated? We certainly can, yes. Um, we can take your voice and by tweaking the sounds that it's hearing, we can make it match so you can get more of a realistic voice and facial features. Bringing the avatar to life had been mm, relatively straightforward. The challenge I now face was how to send all that data from London to the Gadget Show studio in Birmingham. We've been able to capture my movement, we've been able to make an avatar, and the last piece is to send the information to Birmingham. And at the moment, you can't do it. We've just got all manner of problems with connections. And if we can't send the information up there, the whole thing has been for nothing. Another sleepless night, I think, chaps. I was certain that my idea of building a presenter bot was still the winning idea. And so I began with the most important part, the brain. And for that, I enlisted the help of artificial intelligence expert, Rollo Carpenter. Rollo's the brains behind an AI program called Cleverbot, that over the last three years has been learning how to chat online. Lovely, sunny day. <laughs> It's thick with snow down here and I got the day off work. That's such a, a sort of colloquial, natural way of talking. Unlucky mate. This was impressive, but I needed more. So you want a programme, essentially, to chat as you, yeah. as if it was you. Yeah. And um, at the same time, do your job for you. Um, yeah, so deliver your it, lines. Um, yeah, yeah ex exactly. I need, it, I need it to be as convincing as possible. Fortunately, Cleverbot learns from conversations, so it was all down to chat, and I'm pretty good at that. So, if you spent some time talking uh, as yourself, and you made sure that everything you said to it would be something you might want it to say to other people, uh, then it could learn to become a bit like you. Next, I moved on to my second most important presenter asset, my face. And for that, I recruited movie special effects artists Tom and Siobhan Loughton. Oh, oh, it's really cold, man. Imagine cold liquid rubber being rubbed into your skin. Oh. It took half an hour to apply and a further half an hour to set. There he is. Amazing experience. And there's your face. Oh, it's perfect, isn't it? Wow. You've got to try that. From this mold, they'll create a rubber mask and a fiberglass skull that will have motors to move a mouth that will match the words that come out of my AI brain. With my robot's head underway, my attention turned to its body. Unfortunately, all my presenter bot is required to do is sit on the gadget show sofa so I could keep things quite simple. And for this task, I brought in mechanical genius, Paul Riggs. While I'd love to have lots of expressive hands and, and sort of folding legs and all the rest of it, I don't think it's necessary. And, and we a lot just, of work, yeah. yeah. It's a huge amount of work and we don't have enough time, you know. And so basically, I think we're looking at just moving my head. OK. That keeps it really simple because then it's just one motor. We can use it to move your head back and forth. Do you think you can pull something together in, in a couple of weeks? I think we can do it now. Great! <laughs> Show me to your soldering iron. And this is what Paul came up with. Two microphones that, through software, would turn a motor to face wherever the sound was coming from. Yo. Yo. That is amazing. Test complete. <laughs> hey, good work. Great work, man. And by concentrating on the head, we could keep the body simple. And I mean really simple. Uh, right, Jace, this, this, might, this might tickle a bit. <laughs> yeah, you see, told you. That's why I'm so stupid. So I'm Otis, chatting away in the studio. Uh, my name's Susie. How you doing? It's brilliant. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. Jason. Hi, right, Jason. Hello. Huh? Ooh. Ooh. Hey. Hey. Hello, Jason. Ooh. Ooh. Huh? Hey. 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 <laughs> I'm taking the Mickey out my robot self. How postmodern <laughs> is that? So, it was all looking good, but I still had a lot to do. I needed to get Cleverbot to start taking on some of my mannerisms. I needed my special effects head to be finished. Guys, where are you? I'm panicking. I really need you guys here today. And I needed to bring it all together with my body in just a week's time. This could be the beginning of my P45. 
Well, guys, I've got to say, I felt a little bit freaked out earlier, sat between the two of you, but I must commend you. Great creations. Looking good, Susie. Thank you very much. Check out some of these moves, Otis. Ooh, a little spin. Ooh. Nice work. Well done. Jason, as ambitious as ever, you've got a functioning Android with advanced AI. Are you happy? I'm so happy. Good. You make me happy. I, I make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, I do my best. So the both of you have got your creations here in the studio. Neither of you have had to turn up in person. So that part of the challenge you've succeeded in. But the big question is, have your alter egos worked? How well have they worked? Or have John, Polly, Anna and myself had to redouble our efforts just to make you guys look good? Hmm? The answer to that and many more questions will be coming your way after the break. See you soon. Yes, working. Yes, thank you. Hello and welcome back. Hope the ads were entertaining. You may have just tuned in and now you're wondering why Jason and Susie don't look like they normally do. Well, that's because Jason is a robot and Susie is an avatar. Yeah, and if you have just tuned in, you'll have to work out what's going on by yourselves. That'll teach him, won't it, Jace? Whatever. You don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> we don't make sense, of course. Susie and Jason's challenge was to use tech to actually present the show without actually having to turn up at the studio. And, well, to some extent, they have succeeded. Yes, but who has done the best? Whose creation has been the easiest to work with throughout today's filming? This challenge had taken weeks of hard work and painstaking preparation, and in just a few hours, it'd all be over. But at this point, I was really excited because I was about to see my robot's finished head for the first time. Wow! Oh my... Look, look at... Th that's incredible! This had worked out better than I could ever have imagined. The latex head had been hand-painted with acrylics for perfect-looking skin. The eyes were made of glass, and all the hairs were human and attached one at a time. But there was no time to bask in the glory. We, or rather he, had a show to present. So I left him to it. Well, that's it. I've closed the doors on the studio. It's up to Robot Jace now. Well, Jason could go home, I couldn't. From a motion capture studio in London, I'd be actually controlling my avatar throughout the recording. That would be quite good on the sofa. Although, my arm's gonna really ache if I do that. <laughs> and the good news was we'd cracked our data transfer problem. Problem was we were sending far too much information down the line. So what we're now going to do is just send my stick character and feed that from Inition Studio in London up to the Gadget Show Studio in Birmingham where a computer would generate a fully rendered avatar, reducing the amount of data we needed to send by 90%. That is the plan. At this point, my confidence was sky high, until I saw Jason's bot. <laughs> Look at him! I, I was expecting a sort of metal Mickey with some glasses and a cap on, you know? It's, yeah. it's a good likeness. It's remarkably realistic. It's amazing. Yeah. I thought we got this in the can, and now I really <laughs> think we're off against it. And fixing my position on the sofa for the first link didn't go exactly how I'd imagined. Don't do that with your left. Oi, oi, behave yourself. What are you doing? It's like Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> the crew were also having a few problems setting up my J Bot's eye line. Call him, call him, David. That's as far as it is. Jason? Jason? Jason. But eventually we began, although Otis found presenting with the new versions of Susie and me a little freaky. This is one of the weirdest experiences I've had as a presenter. Jason is here, but not here, although you could argue that's par for the course. And Susie isn't here at all, apart from in voice and a, a CGI rendering, which is now touching me. Susie, please, that's got to be the most disturbing thing. This is just all too weird for me. Now my J-Bot, as much as any computer can, thinks for itself using a specially modified version of a program called Cleverbot. But the responses don't always make sense. Now the reason why we both look very different to normal is connected to the challenge. Isn't it, Jace? 
Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> and action. So we came up with a plan B. We got its robot brain creator, Rollo Carpenter, to do a bit of extra programming. If at any time J-Bot heard an exact phrase from the script, he would respond with a scripted reply. Hello and welcome to The Gadget Show. Yeah, we've got possibly the most weird and exciting and unusual show ever for you this week. It worked, but it took forever and played havoc with the schedule. It's one o'clock. We've been here since eight o'clock this morning and we've literally done the opening link and that's it. And after a quick break for lunch in which Jason didn't join the crew, he wasn't hungry for some reason, we continued as we started. Ten, take one. Slowly. Are you happy with the result? You are very happy, aren't you? Well, well, I'm happy, but the question is, are you happy? I'm so happy. Good. You make me happy. I, I make you happy. <laughs> well, you know, I, I do my best. But Polly seemed impressed. Oh, he's having a little look. Please just mark him. In fact, I'd say he's even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> So, despite my avatar having the shakes and uncontrollable limbs... I need to be bigger. ..and my robot's odd responses... All right, Jason's a bit to speak there, but I'll just... ..take his line for you. As you've noticed by now... I ask first. What? <laughs> what was that? We ploughed on and eventually reached the final link of the show. So, who'd won the challenge? My J-Bot or Avatar Susie? This is quite nerve-wracking, waiting to find out. Right, now we've got to reach a final decision as to which out of Jason's J-Bot and Susie's avatar is the best gadget show presenter. Now, to do that, I'd like you both to put scores onto your tablets first for Jason out of ten, please. Reveal them. Hmm, twelve. Interesting. Do you think that's fair, Jason? I don't know. Tell me. Hmm. Well, it looks as though he's leaving it to us, so uh, <laughs> let's get on and see what uh, scores you have for Susie out of ten on your tablets. Ooh, that's pretty decisive. 16 points to 12, I declare. <laughs> Avatar Susie the best virtual gadget show presenter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of the programme. Uh, Avatar Susie, would you like to say goodbye? Yes, this is a very real goodbye from the gadget show. See you next time. Bye. See ya. See ya. <laughs>